Hello everyone, I'm Rod Wortham and welcome to this episode of Race Face Driver Updates here on Racing America. We had eight drivers seeing action over the weekend, including a couple of wins, a championship wrapped up, some races on pavement, and several on the dirt. Remember, we start the Spotters Challenge this week, so keep a sharp eye out for this guy somewhere in today's show, write down the lap number, then go to spotterlap.com and claim your prize. We get started with Sheldon Creed, who had the weekend off in the NASCAR Xfinity Series, so he decided to have some fun in his micro sprint at US 24 Speedway and Logansport, Indiana. We caught up with Sheldon on Monday morning as he was headed to Richard Childress Racing and got his take on the week's event. Hey guys, it is Monday morning. We are driving up to RCR to do some uh, more race car things this morning, but I uh, had a really good weekend off from the Xfinity Series. Um, spent the weekend in Indiana racing micro sprints with a few friends and um, had a really good weekend, learning a lot about it. Um, we pretty much do everything ourselves as far as working on the cars and setting them up. So uh, it's been a lot of learning on how to make them go fast and, and run with the good guys. Um, had two prelim nights, Thursday, Friday, and then uh, 10,000 to win show Saturday. And was able to lock into the A main and uh, go 20th to 8th there. So um, really learning a lot, having a lot of fun doing it and uh, just enjoying racing more and, and racing other kinds of race cars to make myself better on on the NASCAR side. And um, yeah, just had a lot of fun this weekend. Drove back from Indiana yesterday and uh, back at it today uh, on some Xfinity stuff, trying to get ready for Texas. So um, getting really close with the baby, with the wife. Uh, just a few short weeks left, so counting down the days to, uh, to become a parent. So, really looking forward to it. It seems like all the NASCAR stars are into micro sprint racing. What's up with that? Up next for Sheldon, NASCAR Xfinity at Texas Motor Speedway on Saturday. Caden Honeycutt pulled double duty first in his dirt factory stock at Heart of Texas Speedway where he parked it in victory lane for his eighth win in nine starts in that car. On night two, in his dirt crate late model at Devil's Bowl Speedway in Mesquite, Texas, a different track, same results. We were able to catch up with Caden right after the race. What's up everybody, it's Caden Honeycutt here. This bad boy is what we just won tonight here at Devil's Bowl Speedway. Set quick time, uh, ran 18.0 to the second, 18.40. Had an awesome car today. Um, I ended up finishing second in the heat race at the invert, but uh, man, we had a phenomenal race car. Uh, I think we had a pretty good size lead, but I just can't thank my mom and dad. They just worked their tails off and I appreciate them so much. Uh, Kel Gale at Gale Force um, Machine Works, uh, Penske Racing Shot, Group of Speed Lab, Legacy Esports. Um, everybody on this of the helps and supports the American Crate Lake Model Series. I love this series. I love us running with Dustin Daniel. Uh, they have a great program, and I, I look forward to coming back with them. Hoping to come back and race for them uh, for the rest of the year on the off week at the car store, which we'll be have. Like, I think we'll have eight races, so we'll have a ton of races to race. And uh, we're getting that thing loaded up, taking the shots off, getting it ready. And we'll have a nice drive, hour and a half home, knowing that we just won two grand. Up next for Caden, Cars Tour at Franklin County Speedway on May 21st. Connor Mozak was making his second Arkham Menard Series start of the year in his number 23, Nick Taylor, Brett Holmes Chevrolet at Kansas Speedway for the Dutch Boy 150. Connor qualified fourth, ran in the top 10 for the entire race, and brought home a fifth place finish. Up next for Connor, a busy Memorial Day weekend, starting with ARCA at Charlotte Motor Speedway on Friday and Trans Am TA2 at Lime Rock Park on Saturday. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to get up close and personal with Connor Mozak in this week's Spotlight interview. We'll be back with more Race Face Driver updates here on Racing America. My name is Landon 
Cox, and you're watching Race Faith with Michael Updates on Racing America. Welcome back. I had the privilege to sit down with Connor Mozak in this week's Spotlight interview. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this special edition of Race Face Spotlight. Today, we're going out to Charlotte, North Carolina, and sitting down and talking with Connor Mozak. Connor, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing good, Rod. How are you? I'm doing fine. So, Connor, let's get right to it. You've had a very busy year so far. You're racing in the Trans Am Series. You're doing some super late model racing. You're doing some ARCA racing. And I think later in this little segment, you're going to make an additional announcement on another car that you're going to be getting in. But let's first talk about the Trans Am series. Um, you've had an opportunity to run on three iconic tracks this year. So let's take a little piece of each one of them real quick. Let's talk about Coda. Yeah, Coda is one of the, uh, it's probably the nicest facility that we go to. Obviously, it's purpose built for Formula One. Uh, it's got all the paddocks already built there. Um, it's got the tower around the back side of the track. It's really just a first class facility all around. And, uh, you know, it's a track, you know, it's a fairly new track uh, as far as ones we go to on the schedule, uh, with it only being about 10 or 15 years old. And you can just tell uh, they've done a great job and they haven't spared any expenses going there. And it's just been a cool place to have watched races being held there for the last 10 years. And now being able to go there in person is a little surreal, but it's a really cool experience. Yeah, I know from a fan's aspect, I mean, when you look at that place, it is just totally amazing. And I can't even imagine what it's like taking a, a trip around that track. Let's now switch out and talk real shortly about Laguna Seca um, and the corkscrew. What was it like your first time going down that corkscrew? It's pretty crazy the first couple of times. You get used to it, you know, after uh, you know, you're at speed and you're going through there. But even this last year is my second time being there. And even my first lap, uh, just rolling around under caution going down there, it still kind of takes you by surprise the first time you go down there, just, just how steep it is and how much speed you really pick up right there. Uh, and you, your line has to be really precise because you can't see really where you're going. So uh, it's a really cool corner and uh, it's very unique, to say the least. Well, that was going to be my question. What is it like heading into that, knowing that it's there, but you can't see it until you're in right. it? <laughs> right. And if you misjudge it a little bit, too much of the steep side you can really bottom out the car and you know break a control arm or, or something else and maybe even damage the tire and then if you're too far to the left you're just giving up a lot of free speed so it, you have to be real precise and kind of just know where you're at on the track um you know i know in our race this year that was somewhere we struggled we're still not really sure why but that seemed to be the one place that everybody would beat us um so i guess i've got some work to do through there but um it's still overall a great corner yeah, well, I think everybody is probably intimidated and probably struggles with that, uh, with that elevation thing. I think I looked at it and it was, it was like, I want to say it's like 108 feet elevation change from the time you enter it till you kind of pop out of the bottom of it. Yeah, because even once you get kind of out of it, if you're still going downhill uh, until you get to the next corner, it's, a, it's probably a pretty good elevation change, I'm sure. I walked it when I went there last year and it obviously is much steeper. When you go out there and uh, you're just walking versus when you're in the car, but um, it's definitely got a lot of elevation you know, across that whole track. And what's the speed that you're you're hitting going down through that corkscrew? I think uh, before we hit the brakes going into it, uh, you know, we're uh, revving out third gear there, so I assume it'd probably be somewhere around 140 miles an hour, maybe a little bit more, uh, and then we uh, you know slow down to probably 30 miles an hour, 35, taking the first corner, and then you're you're right back up to speed. So um, it's a pretty quick change of speed and, and uh, change of direction. All right. So let's shift. We'll stay out in California. Um, and that's exactly what you did. You raced at Laguna Seca. And I think the next weekend you are at Sonoma. So tell us a little bit about Sonoma. You know, another great place, obviously, you know, it's a track that NASCAR goes to. So it's a really valuable place to get laps. And uh, even though we run a little bit different configuration with the, with the carousel, uh, which NASCAR went to for a little bit, which uh, they're not going to now. Uh, but I think the harder parts of the track, you still get to go through like turn one, two, and three. Those are uh, the tough section. And also the S's around the back part of the track. Um, for us, it was another place we struggled a little bit. Uh, it's very low grip and uh, a lot of low speed corners, which is uh, you know, our cars seem to be best with the higher grip, higher speed stuff. So, um, you know, we're still able to qualify third there just, 
fell off a little bit in the race, unfortunately, but um, still, you know, it's probably the most beautiful track as far as a spectator going up on a hill and looking down. You can almost see the whole thing, and um, it's just a really pretty area. Yeah. All right, so let's shift gears. Let's go to the oval track now. You just got finished racing at Kansas in the ARCA series, um, and I know that you've got some more ARCA races coming up this year, but let's talk real shortly about – give us just a quick recap of the Kansas race. Yeah, we, uh, we just got finished up on Saturday there. Uh, brought home our first top five finish in ARCA. And um, I feel like we should have been a little bit better than that going into the weekend. Um, but we struggled with the balance pretty much all day. In practice, we were really, really loose to start out. Uh, I feel like we were we got it, I thought, pretty good by the end of practice. Um, but unfortunately, it fired off really loose again in the race. I think maybe as the, the day kept getting hotter, uh, our car kept getting freer. So... Um, we kind of were chasing that all day and then we ended up going too tight at the end over adjusting. So never really feel like we got the balance where we needed it, but you know, the car's still in one piece and we've got really good notes going to our next arc race at Charlotte Motor Speedway in a couple of weeks. All right. So all of this road course racing experience that you have has really opened up a door of opportunity for you to run your first Xfinity race. Would you like to tell everybody where you're going to be running that race real quickly? and who you're going to be racing for. Yeah, I'm super excited. We're uh, going to be running the Xfinity race in Portland for Joe Gibbs Racing in the number 18 uh, Toyota Supra. Uh, we'll have uh, a company uh, foundation called With Open Eyes, or Open Eyes on the car, and it's uh, a company that we've been involved with for a couple of years. I actually went to Africa with them a couple summers ago, and uh, they're doing great things over there and also in India and Nepal. Uh, reaching these uh, very remote villages and, and spreading the gospel and the good news. Well, that's awesome. No pressure. Your first Xfinity <laughs> race in probably one of the most iconic cars in the whole series and being with Joe Gibbs Racing. Well, Connor, we're just about out of time for this segment. I really do appreciate you spending a little bit of your time with us this morning. And, um, you know, a busy Memorial Day weekend coming up with you. you racing both the ARCA car and the Trans Am. So good luck, and we'll look forward to speaking with you later in the year. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Well, there you have it. Up close and personal with Connor Mozak. Now back to the show. We're going to take another short commercial break, and when we return, we'll check in on Casey Klein and his dual weekend at State Line Speedway and Cole Denton and Hudson Bulger in the final rounds of the INEX Furious 5 Series at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Can Cole Denton wrap up the championship? We'll find out when we return with more Race Face Driver updates here on Racing America. Hey everybody, this is Anthony Alfredo and you're watching Race Face Driver updates here on Racing America. Casey Klein was at State Line Speedway in Post Falls, Idaho for what was supposed to be two nights of racing. Friday in the Pro Late Model and Saturday in the Super Late Model. On Thursday, the Northwest Super Late Model Series postponed Saturday's event due to a bad weather forecast. Casey would get the opportunity to compete in the Pro Late Model where he qualified 10th in the 21 car field and got to start on the pole with the invert. However, his engine let go on lap 10 in front of the entire field and was lucky not to get collected. However, it ended his day before it really got started. Up next for Casey is round four of the 5150 Junior Late Model Series at Madera Speedway on Saturday. Cole Denton returned to Atlanta Motor Speedway for rounds eight and nine of the INEX Furious 5 Series. In race one, Cole finished second and then backed that up with another second place finish in race number two. Let's get a post-race recap from the driver. Hey race fans, it's Cole Denton. Today we're at Atlanta Motor Speedway for round eight and nine of Furious 5. I qualified second and I started second in the first race of a double header today. And I was able to get in and tuck in for second. And I stayed there the rest of the race, so I finished second. And then the race two today, I started third due to a four car invert of the finishing order of race one today. And I got in the lead 
by turn one and got passed for first and crossed them back and then a caution came out and I started first on the restart and sadly I got moved out of the way for the lead but thankfully I was able to get in and stay for second and finish second. I want to thank my mom and dad Bacon Racing, my grandparents, Race Face Advancement and the Friends of Jacqueline Foundation. Bye everyone. Very impressive. Cole entered the weekend with one thing on his mind, securing enough points to win the Furious Five Championship, and that's exactly what he did. Congratulations, Cole. Up next for Cole, Chris Motorsports Park this weekend. Hudson Bulger was also at Atlanta Motor Speedway for rounds eight and nine in his number 17 Can-Am Young Lions Legend car. Let's check in with the driver for a post-race recap. So we just wrapped up here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Qualifying didn't go the way we wanted to. Ended up qualifying eighth, but started the race eighth. Probably gave him a little more aggressive. I was just running really close times, really hard to pass. So I ended up finishing that race eighth. And then the second race, um, I think I ended up starting eighth and worked my way up to fifth, but unfortunately we got caught up in a wreck about halfway through the race and didn't have enough laps left to um, get back up to the front. I think I ended up also finishing that race eighth. But I'd like to thank Can-Am, Byron Power Sports, Cirque Motorsports, Chris Delbeck, Brett Reagan, everybody else made this happen. Up next for Hudson this weekend at Chris Motorsports Park, back in his legend car. We're headed for our last commercial break and when we come back, we'll check in on Race Face Next Drivers Carter Whalen and Landon Cox, who were both at Metro Atlanta QMA for round three of the Dixie Shootout. So stay right there, and we will return with more Race Face Driver updates here on Racing America. Hi, my name's Brody Moore, and you're watching Race Face Driver updates on Racing America. Welcome back. Carter Whalen had a busy weekend in the Dixie Shootout series at Metro Atlanta QMA where he raced all three cars into the A mains on Saturday. Enough for me, let's check in with Carter for a weekend recap. Carter Whalen here, just got back from the MAQMA regional race in Brazelton, Georgia. Everything was good in practice, but in the heat races for heavy Honda, we had a slight issue and finished P5, I think, putting us P7 for the A main event. Heavy 160, we won our heat race. In Heavy World Formula, we finished second in our heat race. Heavy 160, we ran a strong race. We led for about 15 laps and then ultimately finished second. Heavy World Formula had a pretty fast car. We were going for a podium, hopefully, and then ultimately got in a wreck and something got messed up in the motor, and we fell back to, I believe, sixth. And then in Heavy Honda, we had a strong car after we got the repairs done from the heat race and ended up finishing third. Can't thank everybody that supports me enough, especially the Cox family, Ultimate QM, Mark Tuggle RV, and Conquest Strategic Marketing, an A1 auto course. Up next for Carter, Dixie Shootout at Music City QMA on June 11th. Landon Cox was also at the Dixie Shootout in Atlanta where he had an eventful weekend to say the least. Landon finished first in his heat race in both Junior Honda and Junior Animal, qualified all three cars into the A mains, placing fifth in Junior Honda, fourth in Junior Animal, and third in Junior 160 after getting clipped by another competitor on lap one, flipping the young racer down the front stretch. He stayed in the car, had to start at the tail end, and raced his way back to a podium finish in third. Now that's impressive. His dad and team owner said this was the best racing of his career. Up next for Landon, round four of the Dixie Shootout at Music City QMA on June 11th. Other race face drivers seeing action this weekend include Anthony Alfredo will be at Texas Motor Speedway for the NASCAR Xfinity Series SRS Distribution 250 on Saturday. Jesse Love will be back in his number 21 Mobile One Super Late Model at Greenville Pickens Speedway on May 21st. 
Jake Bowman makes his first start of the year in a super late model at Irwindale Speedway on Saturday. Cassidy Hines will make her second super late model start at Colorado National Speedway on Saturday. And Brody Moore will be back at Madera Speedway for round four of the 5150 Junior Late Model Series, where he currently sets second in points. That's it for this week's Race Face Driver Updates. And remember, if you've missed any of our shows, you can get caught up at raceface.tv on demand. Don't forget to follow us on social media. Make sure to check out Speed Zone Race Store for the latest in apparel. And don't forget to play the Spotters Challenge. As always, we encourage you to support local racing in your communities. We'll be back next week with more from your favorite race face drivers. So go out there, have a great race week. I'm Rod Wortham. Thanks for watching.